What is going on guys, Noki here, and today we're going to be taking a look and reviewing the Magic Cassand 60% wired mechanical keyboard. Now the version that I have here is non-RGB with brown switches, and as you can tell I've already replaced the keycaps which originally came in all white. However, you can pick this keyboard up in red, brown, or blue switches, and if you really want that extra flair, the RGB version will run you at just $30 more. Inside the box you have the keyboard itself, a cheap keycap puller, a mini USB, and the instructions manual of course. Now the board has a clean layout to it, and as you can see it comes with a metallic frame which is something I did not expect for the price. One thing I did notice obviously is that the board does have the directional keys as well as a few others, so I guess you can kind of categorize this as a 60-65% to 65 keyboard. If we flip the board over you'll see that it has two kickstands on the back which is something I found pretty convenient as not a lot of other boards, let alone the high end ones have that already. And here you can see the old keycaps that originally came with the board, like I said they were all white, I think two of them were red. The kickstands on the back of the board are a nice touch. It did take me a while to get used to them, but after I did I found it was much more comfortable than having the board lying flat like I usually do with all my other ones. The USB port is nicely hidden and it actually took me a few seconds to find, but I like how subtle they were able to make it. I mean they even added a gate for the cable to wrap around so it doesn't overlap with the board. Now they did use a USB mini here which seems to be a little bit outdated considering USB micro and CR thing but for $39.99 you really can't expect much or even notice it with performance. Now if we pull a keycap off the board you can see here that we have brown switches however keep in mind these are a clone of the cherry switches but that's not something you really notice until you press the space bar as well as the shift keys as those are the only keys that sound a bit different than your typical cherry browns. Okay, so cosmetically the board looks great. It has a great aesthetic and it would look good next to any setup. Let's talk about the performance here. With the few weeks that I spent with this board, I noticed that the left shift key required to be pressed down hard for it to work, which was an inconvenience as that was one of my main keys that I used when gaming. The other issue that I had with the board that was a deal breaker and made me switch back to my RK61 was the fact that the board had limited rollover keys. Now this is crucial when it comes to gaming as a lot of games will require you to press multiple keys at the same time depending on the binds that you have. For example, four Fortnite. Due to me pressing multiple keys, I would get to the point in a game where my W key would just not respond or allow me to move forward unless I let go of the keys and tried pressing it again. Now, before we finish up this review, it wouldn't be a keyboard review without a sound test, so let's go ahead and see how these brown switches sound. Overall, the board has its pros and cons. If you plan on gaming with this keyboard frequently, this is not the board for you. However, if you plan on getting this board for casual use, including typing, photo, or video editing, basically anything but gaming, I'd say for a $39.99 price tag, it's definitely worth checking out. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you liked the video, and let me know down in the comments what you thought about this keyboard, as well as what other ones you want me to review. Anyway guys, peace.